Dear friends, we are gathered today to celebrate the life of our departed loved one. We are saddened by the loss. We are gathered together to comfort one another and to lift up memory of this person who meant so much to us. We ask you to be with, especially with those who are unable to be here today, who would love to be here, but for reasons uh, that are insurmountable, they cannot be. We ask you to be with all of us, to help us to circle around one another, even as we deal with this com communal sadness of death. We ask you to give us words of comfort, and just the presence of, of being nearby, what a comfort that can be in times of grief. We especially ask for your Holy Spirit to be among us, to bring comforts, to bring fond memories, uh, to, to lift up our hearts, not because of the circumstances, but because the hope we have, the sure hope of eternal life the sure hope of a heavenly existence after we pass away from this mortal coil. We know that in Christ we can find eternal life. By denying ourselves and coming to you, we will find the life that we seek forever. Comfort us with these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of my favorite hymns is Lead Me Gently Home, Father, by, I believe, W.L. Thompson. It's an old hymn, been redone lately by uh, uh, Bill Gaither. But it talks about uh, asking the Lord, praying to the Lord in song, and saying, lead me gently home, Father. Leave me, lead me gently home. And so talking about uh, passing, about passing from this world and getting to the state where sin does not beset, beset you and will never roam from you. Uh, I love that old song. For it reminds me that we, it is called upon us all once to die. And when we come to our funeral, we think of that, uh, that future that we have. If the Christ that we worship doesn't come back before we die, we will be called to paradise after going through a fleshly death. This is a cause for, for thinking, for, for worshiping God, for clinging to the promises of the Holy Writ, the Holy Scriptures. As we're, as we're gathered today, let us join in, in, in uh, comforting each other. Let us circle the family and friends. Let us all do the best we can to be a present help for each other. In our sadness, let us remember the good times, good memories, even though we may be having tears right now. When I th come to sermons for funerals, they're always difficult. They're always trials to present, not because I have no hope, I have great hope in the afterlife and the hope that's coming with the angels coming to greet us when we pass away. It's just a moment, a time, a split second. You're here and then you're on the way to heaven. Jesus talked about the rich man of Lazarus Lazarus, not the Lazarus that he raised from the dead, though that makes a great funeral hymn, 
uh, funeral sermon. But he talked about when the rich man who ignored the needs of the poor man called Lazarus at his doorstep, when they both died and went to heaven, they were both instantly in their state that they were going to be in, uh, were awaiting the end of the world and the new Jerusalem coming down for those that, who had been godly. And the rich man who had been so callous, prideful, he woke up in Hades. But we're thinking now about Lazarus, the godly man. The minute he died, he woke up in paradise. In paradise. Jesus told the thief that was next to him as he hung on the cross with him. He said to the thief who had professed faith in him, he said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And we know that a loved one is also destined for such greatness through faith in Jesus. It's a difficult time when we have a sermon given by somebody who is not present, who is giving a, a general sermon a long way away, a person who's not near the coffin, who does not know the deceased personally. The first sermon I ever gave was for a person I did not know, but I was called upon by the family in a time of need to come in and to say some words of comfort. It's not that hard to do in one way when we're not wrapped up in emotion with our personal involvement with the deceased. It's much more difficult for the friends and family there in the funeral home or near the coffin or in a memorial service somewhere to think of the person who's gone now. And the vacuum that's in your life because they are gone, gone. I have the advantage in a way of not being emotionally attached to this person. But at the same time, I am so emotionally attached to the family of people who are needing to have sermons for funerals at a time when pastors may not be available, where crowds have to be uh, segregated by six feet where only a small number of people are called in for the funeral. Perhaps just the immediate family. It is my compassion and my sympathy for the situation of so many funerals for the virus uh, that are going on now and the funeral homes being clogged up. It's my compassion for all the families who are facing uh, a loss of a loved one and not having the typical opportunity for grief that has moved me emotionally to make this video, this short video, this general video, yes, but with specifically a message of hope for such families and friends. My message of hope is not unusual if you are a Christian. We have a hope through Jesus. We hope in no one and nothing else but Jesus, the Son of God, who died for us on Golgotha's tree and shed his blood that we may be saved. If we will but remember him, if we will but follow him, if we will believe in him and his ability to bring us eternal life. We have hope eternal in Jesus, and death cannot touch it. Death cannot uh, part us from Jesus' love and protections. We are vertically involved as well as horizontally involved. We are looking for the wonders of paradise. We believe in them as coming, as a blessing from Jesus. He died a terrible death, death on the cross. 
The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. These are words to live by. These are words to give you hope in dire circumstances and even the sadness of grief. This is the, the blessing of the message I have for you who I have not seen. This is the blessing I have for myself as I sing, lead me gently home with him. I am I'm speaking to God that exists. I am entreating in Jesus' name the Father to bring me gently home. I am comforted by these beliefs. They are not fables. They are based on history and on faith and on the Holy Spirit's witness in my heart. And I'm sure he is in yours as well if you are a Christian. There is a, a difficulty, though admitted, in not having words about the, the personal life of the person or re, uh, recounting of the obituary. If the obituary is present there, I would encourage you to have a friend or a loved one or a relative to read the, the pertinent parts of that obituary. Uh, even though everybody may have a copy with them, just so the words will sound out after this sermon about the life of this person and that the memorial of their name being spoken and their birth date and their death date and their family members, key family members, will be spoken aloud and will echo in the room you're located in or in the, in the outside environment you're in. I encourage you also to sing a hymn. Perhaps you can sing Amazing Grace. Many people know the first verse of Amazing Grace. I am not able to sing. I'm a, I've been uh, ill lately and uh, I don't have a singing voice anymore. But my heart can be lifted by uh, humming and reciting the old hymns. Do something like that, perhaps. I would ask you also to think of the other families in the same situation you're in, to pray for them silently at this time and for your family. Let's have a moment of prayer. And now let us recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This concludes this brief service by video. It has been a privilege to be with you in this time of sadness and of celebration of our departed loved one's life. Remember each other in the coming days ahead. Call each other. Visit with each other. Uh, bring food. <laughs> Send a card. Keep in touch. The Lord be with you all. Amen. <laughs>